Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fantastic week. I'm currently having a pretty dang good one myself, specifically because of what task was completed this week. And one of the hardships with it is why this video is one day late. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the task at hand, which of course is the needle shower. And I'll be right back with you guys.
So we're tiled, we're grouted, and we're ready to install the needle shower. So I've already got this thing hooked up and ready to go. If I turn hot, we get hot. If I turn cold, we get gold. The packing of these two are already working great, which is awesome to see. Uh, the needle seems to be working as well. I have not yet to test the shower, so hopefully uh, we can take a shower in here with just needle or just shower. Um, but of course that's slightly yet to be seen at this point, but we will soon see how it all works out. So let's go ahead and get this installed because I want to take a shower. shower in place installed mostly not leaking <laughs> and it is time for the thing I've been waiting for for a long time in this house I am going to have a shower and I'll let you guys know how it is after I'm done with that first off let me say the shower works absolutely amazing it's really good it's really good to be able to get clean and beyond that I mean it, it works really well uh pretty good pressure out of it i do need to adjust my hot water heater now uh, before we were just running hot water to two faucets so we turned our hot water down because there's no reason to have that much hot water when we're not using that much but now with this i mean we're gonna need a, quite a bit more hot water i assume it is a pretty thirsty system as far as the amount of water it uses but it's also a shower, so it's probably still comparable to filling a bathtub for yourself. You guys don't understand how long I've wanted this and how long of a process it's been to get to this point right here. For those who don't know, when I bought this place, the plumbing in, water line in, and the water line out were both shot. The water line in was still the original one from 1890. It was still lead, and so it had to be replaced. The water line out was clay and busted and destroyed. So we had to replace that entire thing too. So it's taken a lot of time and a lot of money to get here. And that's what makes that shower I just took the most satisfying shower I will probably ever have in my entire life. And that's before you get to all of the work I did here, just right here to make this all work. All right, so let's get into the who, what, where, and why of all that is going on here, because this has obviously changed a huge amount from last week. First, we come to the tile, which turned out quite, quite well. Pretty happy with it. I was able to get the 45s at the ends here that look pretty good too. So I, this is actually two pieces of tile I glued together. Same thing on the little roundovers. 
maybe it's a little easier to see over here, although it does still need some cleanup. You'll notice about You'll notice that about everywhere on here, there's still a little bit of cleanup to do, like that corner there, a little bit there. So we're not 100 110% done with this thing, but it was close enough for me to be able to take a shower. And to be honest, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to get this thing up and running. I will say also, there was one very, very large mistake I made when I was doing the whole shower here. And that was the grout. The grout I used is this stuff right here. It is Mapai, I believe that's how you say that. Ultra Color Plus FA. Uh, this is a very, very rapidly drying grout. And it's actually the same grout I used here on the floor. But for some reason, when I used it on the walls, this stuff dried in what it says about 20 minutes. When I used it on the floor, it took almost an entire day. Same exact stuff, two different bags, but from the same store. So I'm really confused by this product. Yes, there was a temperature difference when I was doing this versus this, but what it, but what ended up happening and why this video is a day late is because it took me two days to scrape back all of the grout that had dried on this lower portion here. This entire area was destroyed. And yeah, it was a very, very low moment for me this week because I was so close. And then to get hit with a problem like that, was just, uh, it was a lot. But I made it through it and it looks pretty good. There are still some problem areas, some areas that need a bit more grout. Uh, for instance, that little area there definitely needs a bit more grout. Uh, that area there, right there, needs some grout taken off of it. And more or less, there are lots of tiny little touch-ups that I have to get all over the place in here. But, Overall, things look pretty good. Last few things before I go ahead and turn it on and let you guys see the majesty that is the needle shower. Uh, I did get the light in, which is looking pretty good. Again, it's not quite from the era, but I think it looks pretty good. It's fairly simple and it is an outdoor light and waterproof, so it works perfectly for the shower here. The yellow paint that's on the walls up here is actually the same pale yellow paint that's used for all the beadboard. And yes, I did not quite get this corner done. It's coming very soon. But yeah, I think it looks pretty good against the white. But of course, when you have something that is so stark white as the tile, it does, uh, well, you can really see how yellow the paint is, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it brings out the yellow when you have it against something so white. Then lastly, this hole up here, I will be painting the inside of that black here very soon, uh, right after I red guard the inside of that. Uh, red guard is a waterproofer. Uh, you would use it a lot of the times if you're using a hardier backer board or backer concrete cement board uh, for laying tile. Of course, I didn't do that here because I didn't need to because this entire pan is waterproof because of the curdy, that orange stuff uh, system that I used. But this area will get that and then I'll be putting the grate on there again. This is the grate that I have. It is from the era, it's an antique, and needs a little bit of cleanup before I paint it black. And it goes to its brand new home. What I plan on doing here is putting some fans in there that I can use as an exhaust because there is a window back here. And since I can go to that window, maybe cut that window down a little bit and push all of the steam that comes out of the shower through that window. Of course, if that's not happening today, I will have to monitor when we take showers in here and not take five or six showers a day down here to keep the moisture level at a, you know, balanced level. But I don't think we're gonna have too many problems. Again, everything here is all open so I can kind of get to everything so I can monitor everything. Same thing with the back end because of course I have this access panel here so I can monitor everything. And if we have any problems, I can stop what we're doing and figure out a different solution. So. I have a way to monitor this entire shower, make for sure we don't have any moisture problems. Also, one of the things I have not completed yet is the curb here. Now, yes, this isn't the best thing to, you know, use the shower while this isn't incomplete. But again, because this is that curry system, this is also waterproof as well. So it should not affect any of the tiles or anything like that. It should be a-okay. However, this will be getting done here very, very soon. I just could not wait to hop in that shower. <laughs> Uh, but as far as what's going to go here on the step, for, the, for that we have to look across over here underneath are the old vet doors or the old vet cabinet doors is this baseboard here. Now I have a bunch of this. I don't know what type of stone it is, but it is 
like a, well, it is a type of stone. <laughs> So, but to keep with all the colors we have going in this room, this is the baseboard that was originally here in the room. In fact, all of these pieces here were here when, well, I started working on this room. So I'm assuming these are the original baseboards. And since I have quite a few of them and I will probably have to get more because not all of them are quite right, I figure I will wrap the top and the side here in that color. Again, the yellow, the black and white tile, I mean, it's all kind of here. So it just matches and makes the whole room match. So I have to cut myself up two pieces of this, and that will look really nice as well. I know it will. So a little bit more grouting there as well, and that will look stunning. Okay, so now on to the main event, which is the needle shower. How does it work? What is it? And who made it? All, all that good stuff. We'll learn all about it real quick. First things first, here are the handles. I know you guys have seen them before. You have your hot, your cold, your needle. So needle and your shower, which of course is the shower head. So the shower head here has a swivel on it, albeit a bit stiff, but you can turn and move it around. Yes, I did have a shower just recently, so it has a little bit of water hanging out in there. So as I move it, I'm gonna get a little bit wet, but really beautiful style to it. Um, the shower was probably made somewhere around 1900 or 1910, somewhere in there. Uh, it was manufactured by Standard. So you can see the print there, Standard. Uh, everything here is original, including the lines that go back to the pecs. Uh, so all of this it is how it would have been when it was originally utilized and used. And of course, when you feed it from needle, so when you turn the needle dial, you get the water source split here at this pipe, and it feeds to one of two of these, uh, let's say D or upside down U-shaped pipes that all have these little tiny holes in them. Then of course, spray you with water. And you can see again on the other side, all the tiny little holes, and they are also kind of offset slightly. So you also, so you get sprays that come in and you get sprays that come straight out. So let's go ahead and show you how it all works. Now I'm gonna try my best to not get terribly wet here, but not the easiest thing in the world and slightly easier said than done. So first what I'm gonna do, make sure all of the pipes are closed. I'm gonna turn on the hot water <laughs> as it drains. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit the needle. So I'm gonna point you at this side here as that starts to come out. And you can see all the tiny little holes squirting all the water just about everywhere. It's really quite pleasant on the back. It feels good. Although I will say it could use a bit more pressure, um, but mostly that's because I'm not able to turn the hot and cold on at the same time on this because the water is quite cold in the lines and makes it a quite cold experience as far as the shower is concerned. Okay, so let's stop the needle. And yes, my shower valve here is a little bit leaky, I will say. And it will take a second for these lines to drain, so that will remain, well, draining for a few seconds. Then if we want to go ahead and turn on the shower, I'm gonna turn the cold water off. You can see quite good pressure here. Uh, it's really, really quite a pleasant stream. And it drains nicely into our drain. So let's go ahead and shut that off. Shut both of our water sources off. There's hot, there's cold. And I'm gonna turn the needle back on because gravity will actually feed the water back down and this will drain the whole system. So turn that back on. You will see, we'll get the last little bit of water out in about a minute or two. So it takes a little bit of time to drain, but obviously you don't wanna leave water sitting in these pipes for any extended period of time. Uh, these pipes are all solid brass, but they can still get corrosion. In fact, when I did get this, it was a little corroded on the inside. So I had to soak both of these two pipes in CLR overnight to make sure I could clean up all the needles. So all the needles, needle holes would work and would squirt water. But I'd say 
quite happy with it, quite pleased on how it's turned out and how it's working and just how stunning it is. It's such a pretty, pretty little fixture. And again, I talked about this in this last episode. This is another way, in a weird way, of touching history. Um, where was this installed? You know, I, I have no idea who's, whose house was this in. Um, these weren't a terribly common thing. I mean, they did exist and people did have them, but this is at the time where a lot of people didn't have indoor plumbing whatsoever. You know, they didn't have a bathtub, they didn't have a toilet, let alone a very expensive needle shower. These things were not cheap. Some of them ran as much as fairly high-end automobiles. And so, you know, to be able to add this here to the Charles S. Brown house, to be able to add this little piece of history that is, again, something you can come and touch and feel and potentially have a shower in it. Um, I think it's really cool. I think it's, you know, who has one? Who's, who's operating one in their house right now? I mean, I know certain people do, they do exist, but it's kind of a novelty and it's super fun. And it's a kind of type of shower, if you will, that is coming back uh, in, in vogue these days. Like you have these multiple head showers that surround you with water. And essentially that's exactly what this is. That's what these parts are. Um, it makes rinsing your body a very, very quick affair. <laughs> Uh, I love it. I really do. I think it's one of the coolest features I've been able to add back here to the house. Um, it, it adds quite a bit. It's such a, I don't know, I guess, again, it's just a unique little piece of history that you can be part of. And yes, it is plumbing history, and it's not the most exciting or most glamorous thing in the world, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> And the shower, like I said before, it's been a very, very hard fought victory that we've gotten here. You know, with, with all of the money and all of the time and all of the effort that it takes to get to a position just to get here. Uh, I mean, this house, when I bought it, was very, very close to being a full-on ruin. Something you would see, well, in other parts of St. Louis or cities like Detroit and stuff like that. It was, it was verge, on the verge of that. And from the outside, there are still parts of it that look like they're still vergy. Everything's solid and we've got everything condensed and we've got everything together so where nothing's under threat of collapse. We've eliminated 98% of all leaks in the house. We've got water. We've got sewage. We've got tons of electrical now. It's come a long, 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 long way. And I think this is one of those weeks where I feel pretty proud of my accomplishments. I feel like I've done something that has a true impact and it does it has a big impact on kim and i's life because that is that shower probably saves me six hours a week you know like six hours a week yeah because i have to go to my father's house and it's only 15 minutes away but after you take your shower and play with his two husky puppies who are awesome and i'm gonna miss doing that as often as i used to i'm still going over there and playing with them don't worry, I will, I will see those too. You know, and there's been days and nights where it's too late to go and take a shower. And so you just go to bed kind of gross from the day because, you know, I wanted to achieve something or finish something or just push a little further. And now I have access to get myself clean when it's hot in St. Louis and just sweaty and gross and covered and whatever I'm covered in that week. I have potential to get that washed away. And it's one of those things you don't think about until you don't have it. I, we haven't had one here for the three years I've had the place. So it's a big, big accomplishment. And I'm quite, quite happy with it all. So that is the end of the episode. And it is also the end of the season. I think 50 episodes is good enough for a season three. Which means very, very soon we are getting into season four. Which means next week you guys are going to be getting a rather long video because it's going to be a recap of the last 50 episodes. Which is a lot to recap. <laughs> um, and I haven't started that project yet, so we will see how that all goes. It's also a good excuse for me to take a week down and do some spring cleaning. Even though it is not spring yet, I 
house desperately needs a little bit of attention in some areas and I'd like to get a few of that stuff wrapped up, pushed away, and completed. The last year or so has been a big push, you know, going from having a toilet and a sink to having laundry and sort of a kitchen and, and a shower and having real work going on on the man's roof. Um, completing a lot of the walls and the doors and the windows that need so much attention in this house. And there's plenty of them that still do. <laughs> uh, but in time, as I chip away at this elephant of a project, it just gets more beautiful and more put back together and the old girl gets the love and the attention and the hard work that she truly deserves. You know, and as I trace more history of the house and, and share more tales of Mr. Brown and find more Holland Brown ephemera and machines and all this stuff that's coming up in the future, I'm just, I get overly excited about all the prospects, all the things that I'm going to get to do and I'm going to get to share with you. And it's all a super exciting prospect to be able to do this, to be able to do these jobs and these tasks that that not only do I love, but I have grown to be even more fond of. Because when you get to step back from work that you've put your blood, sweat, and tears in and say, yeah, that looks pretty good, it's a pretty exciting feeling and a very fulfilling one. Very fulfilling. And every day I get to come in here and breathe life into something. You know, take something old and make it fresh and new and usable again. To, to keep it from the trash heap of history. To make sure that the tales and the stories and the actual physical thing is still here for the future. And it's such a cool thing. And it's all been such a really beautiful experience. And it's all made that much better because you guys care too. So really, truly, thank you all so much don't think you guys know how much you have changed the trajectory of my life. So for that, I will be forever grateful. So, on to bigger and better things. Of course, there is the Manson Group coming up, which me and Eric have been getting a little bit more done, a little bit at a time. And once the weather gets a little bit better, we're going to get right back to that and things are going to happen up there. And when they happen, they're going to happen very rapidly. So, slow build up to rapid completion. And it's going to be beautiful. I have a tour of my old place, the place I started out with here in St. Louis, the place I spent three years of my life putting back together. It's actually the reason this place exists at all, for me anyways. There's gonna be just really, well, another year's worth of content coming for the next season and a lot of exciting things and I'm sure some unexpected things and I'm sure some hard days some days that suck and I know there was going to be some really high amazing beautiful moments so I do hope you guys will all join me for the future join me to see what becomes of all of this Victorian beauty that I've kind of accumulated and where it all goes and how it all works and we'll get there <laughs> but I do hope we can all get there together so Caleb here signing out for season three and I will see you guys all again in season four until then, take care and bye-bye.